So now what we're going to do is, is take that basic MA2 model that we fit before and do a version of it now that forces a seasonal signal to be fit to the data. And we do that by doing something very similar to what we did before. Uh, we'll start by creating something to store all our model information. So I'm going to call this the season MA2. And we're still playing around with functions from the forecast package. So label uh, this with a forecast. The function we're going to use is still that ARIMA function that we used prior. Give it our NDVI time series object, NDVI.TS. We're going to give it, just like we did before, what those orders are for the AR, the I, and the MA components of the model. And that's zero for the AR, zero for the I, and two for the MA. And now what we're going to do is we're going to specify that there's also a seasonal component to this. And so we'll do that by saying seasonal equals, and just like, I, just like before, we'll give it three values, the order for a seasonal AR, the order for the seasonal I, and the order for the seasonal MA. And so for this, let's just do a zero AR, a zero I, and a two annual cycles for the MA. Why am I asked telling it to do two annual cycles as a moving average as opposed to an autoregressive? We're already dealing with moving averages at the moment, and so I'm just going to stick with that. Let's run this code. And just like we did before, let's plot our NDVI data, and we're going to plot on top of that the data that was fit by the model. Oops, yeah, season MA2. And then to help us when we're going back and forth, I'm going to do this as a green color so we can see which one is which. So this is what our new model is generating and how it compares to our data. It's a little hard to see. It's still missing some of these big peaks clearly. It's still missing some of these troughs. I'm going to go ahead and uh, replot our previous model. I'm going to run that. And now I can toggle back and forth between the two graphs and we can see what kind of differences there are exist between these two models. So this is the one without the seasonal component. And this is the one with the seasonal component. And the two are generally very similar. So a lot of that signal in the data really is being incorporated in those first couple of time steps. But there are subtle differences that pop up with that seasonal signal. Let's see if we could find a, a nice, as you toggle back and forth, focus on, let's say, this area right here. And go forward. And you can see that there are differences in what these values are generating uh, between the two models. It's not a very dramatic difference as we go back and forth. So let's now look at the summary output for the seasonal model. Season MA2 run. Um, so now what you see is not only do we have the coefficients and standard errors for the coefficients for MA1 and MA2 uh, aspects, but we also now have these SMA components here, which are giving us the coefficients related to that, that seasonal signal that we have forced to be fit. This is looking at that lag of 12 months, and then the uh, SMA2 is the lag of 24 months. And then again, we have AIC information for comparison, comparing model fits. Let's check our residuals. Let's check our residuals. And give it our season MA2 information. We can still clearly see some areas here where we still have um, so here we have our residuals, and let's go down to what's really probably the more uh, important graph at the moment, which is looking at our autocorrelation uh, structure in the data. And what we see is we're still picking up a little bit for uh, this 28-month signal, and then uh, our 36-month signal is still in there. And that's probably explained some of these areas where we still, it looks like we still have some structure in the data in the residuals. And so one of the things that you may be noticing popping up uh, when we do the check residuals is down here in the console window, what you see is this thing called the young box test. And it's an it's a test for whether or not your residuals coming off of your model are white noise or lack of correlation structure. And what you can see is that we do still have a significant correlation structure in those residuals 
just confirming what we're seeing from the ACF plot, which are these strong signals coming out at, at some of these longer lags. So what I'm going to have you do now is to create your own seasonal uh, model for the precipitation data. Then we're going to come back together and we'll explore the autoarima function and uh, what it's doing and what it tells us about our data.